Hello everybody. Welcome back. The rain has stopped. It's September 3rd. We're doing Robot Space and Nonsense today, which is like, that's a good section. It's a good breakdown. It definitely hasn't stopped. It's just lit up. Oh, really? I like, looked outside a minute ago and it was raining, but not like, like it was last episode. Well, you know what else doesn't stop? Coffee delivery in Australia. There's no need for it to stop because you don't need humans for it. Alphabet's drones delivered 10,000 cups of coffee and 1,200 roast chickens last year. So, wing. Served up to 10,000 cups of coffee. That's amazing. They got a picture of it. Show them the picture. Yeah, say, so is there a picture on this article? What would you pay to get a Meyer rotisserie chicken to your door in 10 minutes? Uh, probably like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't pay that much, but... I mean, when you're feeling that level of self-loathing and it's like, I can get a delicious roast chicken here and just I can just hit a button. It's like, all right. Did you door dash very often? Not super often. Because it's expensive. Yeah. They've been kind of weird about it, too. Look at the whole... After my grocery delivery experience, I can't imagine DoorDash would be anything but a disaster. Yeah, we don't we do not do the grocery delivery. Like, we, we barely are okay with uh, groceries to the, the... They'll bring it out to your car. That's much but they, less... But the same pickers do that, right? The worst parts about that are the same. Uh, they seem to get the accuracy. The really? accuracy seems Higher. a lot better... Is that, based one. is that the difference between like Instacart doing it and internal people doing it? I can, I think internal people were doing it on our pickup because uh, now that I think about it, I think that I think at least twice that they've that I can remember in my head um, they were wearing the store uniform. It That's it might be too though that they have like more time if they know like so and so's coming at X time to pick this up. Like I can start doing this this setup now. I guess, and maybe but they have do more time. Five or six at a time, so I, it's probably not that granular. Well, the accuracy with the person delivery is not great. And I get it. Yeah, I'm we not, tried that last year. It was not. I'm not trying to hate on you, Instacart people out there. I know that you're under an incredible time crunch to do that, but come on, sometimes you don't try. Sometimes <laughs> you're like, "Oh, do you want a replacement for this?" I know it's there. <laughs> I know it is. We talked last week about Alder Lake, and that's what this uh, story starts out about. But the reason I put it in here is because of this incredible uh, AI chip <laughs> and that transistor density. Oh, my. <laughs> Intel unveils Intel. Intel unveils details of a 100 billion transistor AI chip and Alder Lake hybrid processor. Look how happy he is with that wafer. It's Raja. I bet he never thought he would be modeling uh, Intel T-shirts. So they are looking to uh, come up against NVIDIA and their big, powerful AI chips with this new monster, with all those transistors. Woo! Time will tell. I can't wait to get my hands on some XE graphics and see how that is. We're also entering a new world of uh, driverless delivery, right? Mm. But not pizza. No. <laughs> Instead, uh, the ship. have you looked at the shipping prices? Yeah. Look... To get anything shipped right now across an ocean is absolutely insane. Yeah, I think the shortages will get worse. And I think that's a, a big part of the uh, like inflation push is that, right? Anything that has to get shipped, you're tacking on a lot of money. Maybe this guy can help us. World's first crewless zero emissions cargo ship will set sail in Norway. So this is a ship for getting containers from A to B, but no emissions and no crew. Great for Somali pirates. You think those are solar panels on it? Oh, that seems like that would be bad because that's where the cargo should go. Well, I think that the cans are all... There's a, there's a lot under the water there that you're not seeing. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Right now, it cannot unload itself. It still needs a crew at the docks. And I think someone might have to steer it into harbor, but uh, eventually they aim for it to be... 100% autonomous. Well, you know, unloading a ship like that autonomously seems like a great, like, something that modern AI could tackle if the interface was there. Yeah, modern AI is going to get some pushback from those unions. <laughs> those are strong unions. You don't want to mess with them. You think we'll have a thing in the future where it's like you're the descendant, you know, you're the great, great, great grandson of the guy who used to work at the docks to unload the thing, and the AI was just so good that... You know, at first it was like you have to monitor the AI, but then the AI became just so good that you, you know, pass that job down through lineage, like, and you just get money from it. 
people like, don't pass jobs through lineage anymore. Well, I mean, it's like you used to be, you know, the doc work for AI, but then we have all this upheaval and stuff because it's like everything is done by AI. So you just get a stipend because you happen to be working that job, but then you die, but then it goes to your progeny and so on think, and so forth. I think what you're kind of tiptoeing around there is a caste system. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've, we've kind of figured out that's not a good well, way to like, do it. Well, people do like, you know, they used to be the farmer and then when you're, when your dad retired, you got the farm, but I don't think I don't think society works that way as, as much anymore. Like you don't you don't inherit the work of your fathers. You go to the city and then you get a different job. And you shouldn't, because that scenario should be. It's like, hey Bob, uh, you see the writing on the wall, right? The writing that says your job is going away. <laughs> don't have kids. <laughs> we have enough. We don't need another one of you. <laughs> That's what we're telling you here, Bob. <laughs> we're gonna take care of you till you die. But don't do it. It's not so much the caste system, just that it's like you 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 own that, and then, but you don't really. Now, Ownership is not a thing in our society anymore. <laughs> it's going to be universal income, which is going to promote rampant breeding. Well, you used to be the you know your grandfather was the dock worker at wherever. Your universal income is derived from what his universal income was at the time we transitioned to that. But now, you've given me, basically. There's a golden ticket between my legs. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about it like natural gas rights. It's like there's a natural gas well on property that you own that was negotiated by your, you know, grandfather you, or great grandfather. But you don't own a job. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I agree that there probably will be something like that. Though. Like there's going to have to be a transitionary phase where a lot of bad decisions are going to be made. <laughs> that's probably something like one of them. Yeah. I was like, I was part of the great Instacart generation. <laughs> and there's going to be that one guy who refuses to go along with it because he has principles. And he's like, no, I will not have children. And they're like, but Steve, they're taken care of. People will adopt them just for the income. <laughs> Speaking of bad decisions, uh, we learned last week that every single Chevy Bolt has been recalled and not only that but they've now extended the park it outside and don't go anywhere near it to every single chevy bolt wow why the answer is hilarious misaligned factory robot may have sparked the chevy bolt fires so it turns out in the battery packs the batteries the big batteries are made out of smaller easier to assemble much safer batteries and then there's a little piece of metal foil basically that's stamped in place well, this robot was ripping one particular stamp in half. So it still was electrically conductive, but only half the area that it was designed for. So it will overheat and fail eventually, causing a fire. Also, I've noticed this is the second week in a row that Ars Technica in their little like preview video has been advertising Dan Abnett from Warhammer 40,000. Why? Why is that so Because he paid for popular? the ad space. I doubt it. Click on it. I bet. I bet that sponsor. Well, it's just somewhere. a video. We don't we might mention if it's like an ad, though. Maybe there's a game coming out or something. No. Uh, autonomous rides. We've been promised them for a very long time, but these companies are kind of slow to go all the way. But it is trickling out. More and more of them in very, very safe places are saying full autonomy. Waymo starts offering autonomous rides in San Francisco. Good luck, Uber, staying in business. The one time the sub-headline is great, you don't read it. But riders will still be under an NDA. Ooh, you're not allowed to talk about it if something goes wrong. Not allowed to talk about it at all. That's true. Although, if, it, if you were like, that's the most amazing experience ever, I doubt they would complain. <laughs> they no. might give you a written release, yeah. So, if you were, you have to, it's the same program, they change the name. Uh, but if you're part of it, you're still part of it, and you can start requesting those. And you should, and you should tell us about it. Drones, remember there for a while we had all those uh, airport drone scares? Yeah. yeah. And they implemented all those DJI rules and all that stuff. Who are these yahoos that are, like, what crazy person would fly a drone around the airport? You're not supposed to do that. I mean, it seems obvious to anybody that has a pulse that that's a terrible idea. But don't you think those kind of went away after they got their legislation? Yeah. Hmm, that's weird. But this was not here in the uh, the U.S. This was across the pond, and apparently they didn't get the memo about airports. Plane damaged after being hit by a York police drone? 
at Buttonville Airport. So the York police apparently were flying a drone around and somebody was flying in a really small plane, a Cessna, and it did a lot of damage to the wing. So they weren't at the airport necessarily. They were in a neighboring neighborhood doing surveillance. And somebody said, well, isn't it standard procedure that you notify the airspace? And they were just like, eh. <laughs> we didn't. Righto. Because, you know, they're British. They didn't actually do it. And uh, Blue Origin. What, what did you say Blue Origin? If you had to rank the space companies, where would you put Blue Origin? Bottom. Uh, well, in, I'd put in, them above Virgin Galactic. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there's a huge gulf between all those and SpaceX. Yeah, absolutely. SpaceX is definitely out in front. And... It might be the reason this is happening, or one of the reasons at least. Blue Origin employees are jumping ship. Jeff Bezos' the spaceflight company has lost at least 17 high-ranking staffers in recent months. He's lost say. some and of them to SpaceX. And we're not talking about HR people here. <laughs> we're talking about the big brains going away. How bad does it have to be that you're willing to go work for Elon Musk? I mean, uh. that's like picking between... I don't know, something really evil and something equally evil. Like <laughs> Lex Luthor and Dr. Octopus? So. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Do you think Elon Musk is arrogant enough to try to tell these guys at this level what they should be doing? Yes. Or does he understand that no. he's not on their level? No. You think so? Yeah. I, I think, think he is, yeah. I think that both of them will, will, will absolutely do that. Yeah, it's got to be hard to bite your tongue if you're like a... A PhD in astrophysics, and he's trying to tell you <laughs> something yeah. that you know is not the case. Well, because when you watch the interviews with him, like I think he understands quite a bit, but like, oh, he's definitely a smart guy. It's yeah. clear, like he thinks he knows all the ins and outs of it, and I'm like, I, I'm sure you're smart, but like I would leave this to the professionals. And he probably knows way more than the average person. Right, might be a little bit of Mount Stupid there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. This could be good, or it could be an absolute nightmare. Oh, God, I, I hate these <laughs> private phone numbers. That could be real. That could have been a it's real not. phone call. It's their auto warranty again. Why can that not be an FCC fine? I just want, I just want to tell Microsoft Teams, uninstall the call part. <laughs> You've done it so terribly. Just get rid of it. <laughs> Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. This could be a great thing, but I think when we look at our big tech companies, we see a dark, dark future. We do. Because that whole thing is going to be applied to this, and it's going to be bad. The International Space Station could be followed by commercial space stations after 2030, NASA says. Will China's space station complicate things in low Earth orbit? Eh. You think they'll have, like, uh, you know, space cornhole, where, like, you release a sandbag in one space station to try to, you know, but we accidentally take out the other space station's oxygen tanks. Yeah, it's going to be that uh, Kessler syndrome <laughs> on purpose. I was thinking more benign, not benign, I guess, but just more boring dystopia where it's just like competing gas stations or Dollar Generals, but they're, you know, dotting every like available area of space above us. Yeah, you know, I recently read a an explanation of why that happens like why is there a Lowe's and a Home Depot across the road and it's because if you crunch the numbers it actually is better to go where the customers already are than to try to get new customers so they're willing to share I mean the, whoever was there first isn't willing to share <laughs> yeah but they don't have an option <laughs> that's what I'm picturing that's going to be like it's just full of space junk oops well, maybe if that goes horribly wrong and you're not willing to go to the Facebook station because you've been banned from Facebook and that's part of the requirement, <laughs> maybe you can go over to our friends in China. China to launch an uncrewed cargo ship to Tiangong Station. The Long March 7 rock rocket will carry the Tianzhou 3 into orbit mid to late September. So I'm sure we'll cover that on the news when it's time, but an uncrewed cargo ship I wanna see, for space. I want to see the unloading robotics up there. Don't you? Yeah. That's, that's be interesting. interesting. Or is it just sort of like use the vacuum of space to do it? Yeah, it's like use the vacuum of space. Just let it float out and then just uh, give it a little push. Give it a little nudge. Hope there's nothing, you know, breakable in there. All my eggs are smashed. That would be tough if you're one of the first crew members to get up there and you find out that all the stuff is just wrecked. Yeah. Just all smashed. 
Where am I supposed to deliver this? One International Space Station way. It's hmm. an Amazon driver. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't peed in days. <laughs> Uh, and this is just a fun space story because it's just crazy how stuff works up there and the fact that we're able to learn about it. Again, this is one of those situations where, like, you know, these people were all the same species, but the intelligence levels are so <laughs> variable. It's incredible. Hubble captures a stunning Einstein ring magnifying the depths of the universe. So Einstein postulated that, hey, gravity could act as a lens in some scenarios. And sure enough, here we've got it. Oh, are there, are there five things in this picture? No, there's only three. But because of gravitational lensing around a black hole, it looks like there's five. Look at that. Incredible. It also gives us very, very long view that we would normally never get to see these things this far out. Illusion 100. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. I think we'll ever get to a point where we have artificial gravitational lenses just for further exploration or keeping an eye on all of the colonies i don't understand how if we don't if we get to a point where we've got you know artificial gravity deck plating in our ships that we couldn't do something like that yeah if you get to the point uh, and don't you have to manipulate gravity to get faster than light travel anyway so yeah I mean, why not just assume that's going to happen or at least inertia you gotta you gotta do something to affect inertia well, we do a little bit of uh, 3D printing here in the robot section as well, because those are robots, right? Kind of. Especially these, because the scale is so high. Feast your eyes upon the world's first 3D printed steel bridge. It looks whimsical, but it could be a blueprint for fixing our woeful infrastructure in the U.S. So they created a model. They put in a, uh, a bridge initially, but it was loaded with sensors so that they could analyze what kind of traffic and stuff like that happens over the bridge. And then they used that data and used data about the stresses that the bridge was facing in order to design the most optimal solution. And do you, I remember there was a bridge that was kind of like this in that it was all curves and very smooth and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was also 3D printed. We did years ago. Yes. So how's that? How's that the first one? This one's steel. Ah, what was the other one made out of? I think it was just concrete. Mm. Obviously, though, they did not print this in place. So I don't know. I would like to see the robot actually do this on location. It's unique. It seems like that would be difficult accounting for weather. Also, we're not 100% sure this is going to work. How confident would you be using the 3D printed bridge? Walking across it, I would feel fine. There's no being in being in a car, I wouldn't no, feel No, there's no vehicle great. traffic. Uh, it's only foot traffic. Worst case scenario then I I get dunked, but if you had a car across that'd be a little scary. I bet those canals are pretty nasty. Yeah. You don't want to go down there. No. Especially but not if you've got any open cuts. Be survivable. Survivable. Well, Disney has always been known as pushing the envelope in terms of robotics. They have those amazing uh, Hall of Presidents and all that stuff. And I'm sure they have even more impressive stuff <laughs> now. That one president looks so weirdly like Hillary. Yeah. I <laughs> wonder why. It was impressive when I was there 30 some years ago. I can't <laughs> imagine what it is now, but we know that they've added an amazing new feature. Are you ready for sentient robots? Uh, so this is uh, this is Groot that we're looking at here. Oh, um, I don't think that's Groot because I don't think Groot has human teeth. He looks like the uh, the Imagineer thing that they used to do. Is that what he is? Is that what a picture that picture is? The the author talks about how uh, he was interacting with the, the fully assembled animatronic Groot, and it was responding in real time to his stuff because he's you know Groot was you know all I am Groot and blah blah blah. Also, the, I think the most impressive thing that I got out of it was that he was not fixed. He could move. Oh, yeah. He could walk around with all that. Yeah. I don't know how they were powering him. They're I guess trying he's got to tethered. replace the cast members. Some of the Disney robotics things, the, the robots do move around, but they have, the, they have the power cable. So now that we have this AI capability, here's my amazing idea. This would make the Hall of Presidents a huge, huge attraction, way more than it is now. We take that Donald Trump that was actually Hillary, we give it both personalities. <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of fight, you know? Like, the one is always trying to get out. I feel like this is a plot from Futurama. One of the episodes of Futurama is, like, they loaded Bender's personality into another robot or something. The Futurama story there would be they would do that, and then that robot gets elected. Because <laughs> it detracts both votes. Uh, these horrible, depressing stories, yeah. uh, they come far too often, and 
What drives me crazy is there's no recourse. They're just like, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. A year yeah. of your life is gone. Meh. How AI power tech landed a man in jail with scant evidence. So this is that shot spotter software, apparently. And uh, it went off near this guy's house, and they arrested him. And, you know, pretty early into it, it's like, I don't think this is really enough evidence. But then they kind of forgot about it or had some paperwork or whatever. The dude was in jail for a year, and he's 65. Solves their problem, right? Who cares? Well, the the judge, when he finally got in front of a judge, the judge was like, this is nothing. You have no evidence. And then that's when it got thrown out. But, I mean, at that point, he'd been in jail for a year. How long did the prosecutor get for that false accusation? Uh, nothing. Nothing oh. happened. Oh, well, that's, that's how that works. Right. They have full immunity to everything, no matter what happens. Kind of like that other company or several companies that are getting that right now. This I was more impressed with until I learned how you control it. It is not, and I remember we did look at some of that stuff that was reading like the movements to predict. Even for uh, amputees, they could figure it out. This is not that. You have to use your foot. <laughs> Robot thumb allows pianists to play with 11 fingers. So you, have a, you, have, they, you mount a thumb over here, and it turns out it's pretty easy for us to figure out how to use that. Isn't that like the beginning of iRobot? Don't There's they talk no, about that? It's not in that picture. And they don't actually have a photo of it. Yeah, there wasn't a photo when I looked at it either. The, um, the, the, this article doesn't, also doesn't do a good job about... Um, there's a, uh, there's a, a large scientific body that studies like tool use because it shows up in not just primates. And um, we have a, like human beings and a lot of primates have an incredible ability to pick up a tool and make a tool part of like your psyche. But it is definitely something that has evolved over a very, very long time because some animals don't have that. But some do, like crows do. Crows can learn how to use tools really, really effectively. Um, but other animals are not, like, they're just, they, like, raccoons have, you know, the machinery to use tools, but they're not very good at it for whatever reason. Because they're losers. <laughs> always have been, always will be. Man, they can they can suck a yolk out of an egg though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, but you know, crows can can an octopus also. They're, yeah. they're good at really really good at, at using tools and figuring stuff like that out. You know why they're good at that, Krista? Because they suck at everything. <laughs> Down with raccoons. <laughs> the big joke, and God, I somebody had to do it on purpose. Last time we talked about this, we of course asked. Why did they flare the head? <laughs> yeah. Why not just taper it? And then you wouldn't get this comparison. I think they're begging for it. Model of Jeff Bezos' rocket looks kind of like a sex toy selling for $69, according to the New York Post. Well, there's the picture. Is this Blue Origin selling it, or is this yeah. just... Oh. It's official. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. 69 will get you the base, but if you want the single-use engines that come with it, I'm not sure exactly. I guess those are like a chemical reaction type thing, right? Mm. Uh, it's like a hundred and some. And then you have to buy more engines. Also, the shipping gets weird for that. Expensive product. Also, jobsvacancy.in. You really have to go a long way sometime to get away from those paywalls. <laughs> Tourism is, I guess, kind of picking back up in some places. I don't think that I would venture out. Although a beach is outdoors, it's probably pretty safe, right? Except the Gorings. <laughs> Corsican cows will not give up their beach home to tourists. And uh, this is in the post-lockdown situation. So in Corsica, uh, there are some farmers that have grazing rights all over the island. And because there haven't been any people there, the cows have gotten braver and braver. And the cows really like hanging out on the beach. So now that the people are starting to come back, the cows are like, what, what are you doing? This is our beach. Several people have been gored. One woman in the face. Ooh. How do you see a cow coming and get your face down there? Like, would Probably you... taking a selfie. Like, <laughs> oh, look at me on my vacation at the beach. And then they go to take a picture with the cow. Also, how unfortunate this poor young lady here. They snapped as soon as she was picking her bikini out of her crack. Yeah. <laughs> Come oh. on, man. That's not... Be a bro. That's not flattering at all. So there they are. Look and, how uh, happy they are. Yeah, they're loving that beach. I bet it's fun to be on a beach if you're a cow, right? Yeah, that's exciting. Although they can't. Don't cows have to eat almost constantly? 
Yeah, grass. There's and nothing stuff. there to eat. But cows, they also kind of just lay down when it's really hot. So maybe they get out on the beach, they, they relax for a little bit, cool down, and then they go eat some more. They do have that uh, recycling system. Yeah. So maybe you load up on grass, and then you go hang out on the beach and chew it, right? Mm. Sounds exciting. It's a fun day for your cow. <laughs> The cool water and the and, the, and the, uh, the salt breeze. Obviously, it's, I mean, you can't just attack the cows because people would lose their minds about that. So what do you do? Nothing. You suffer. We've seen a lot of stories about people who live with their parents and then get into court cases about it. And I just can't fathom it. <laughs> I mean, they're doing you a pretty solid favor letting you move in with them. But... Yeah, I guess this is the way the world is now. How much was son's porn collection worth that parents destroyed? Judge decides value. The answer, $45,000. Whoa. Which seems high. It does seem a did bit he high. Have, how much did he have? Well, they describe it as a trove of pornography and an array of sex toys. Mm. So I imagine the toys probably added a lot to the value, right? And this is this is obviously something that wasn't suddenly discovered. It was something that they probably knew about for a long time. Well, he moved out, actually. So I, I think uh, when the pandemic hit, he moved in with them because, you know, had some problems. Then he moved out, and he was like, hey, I've boxed everything up. Just ship it to this address. And they're like, oh, okay. And so, some boxes didn't show up. And when he contacted them, his father said, son, we did you a great favor by destroying that awfulness. <laughs> and that's what got him in the court case. Ooh. They admitted to it. Did he have it cataloged? Like, imagine like you get ninety percent of your pornography connect collection back, and then it's like, where's the, you know, <laughs> sluts nine nine nine, and like you know, it's because you're missing one thing. You've got like a spreadsheet, and you realize you're missing one. Yeah, the great thing about this is that there is now a lot of court paperwork and evidence and stuff stored away somewhere about Sluts 999. <laughs> An itemized list with valuations. They said that there were 107 titles that the, the court-appointed evaluator couldn't find a value for. <laughs> what were those? <laughs> That's just home videos. <laughs> uh, I had no idea that this was popular in some parts of the, the country, but then when I started thinking about how country people are, I was like, yeah. <laughs> in like a, a cowboy type of town, I could totally see this. The city of Reno is cracking down on whips and moves forward with a public ban. Also, Mean, Meanwhile, open carry is fine. We, yeah, we do have to apologize to the Brits, or at least I do, because I'm always ragging on them about their steak knives. Yeah. <laughs> but this is way dumber. If you can't make a knife and, or make a whip and drive people out of the temple with it are we even in a free country anymore <laughs> now here's the crazy thing and I, I have a maybe a theory but i'm not sure maybe you guys have ideas about this somebody responded to this and said that it uh it affects the homeless community most of all and is an undue burden on them why does the homeless community need whips are they defining whips as like rope yeah, yeah. I, I don't. No, it's, it's you know, they're cracking whips. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, I can't imagine what would you need a whip for as a homeless person. So the only thing I can think of is maybe like uh, you know how the Times Square has all the grifters. Maybe like whip play in the middle of the street is a way that you're busking. You know, because you can do tricks with them. That seems like a lot more work than most homeless people are willing to put in. Have you seen the those guys that stand completely still? Well, those are street performers. I don't think those people are homeless. Well, that's true, but they pretend to be homeless to get your money. <laughs> those guys make a lot of money, actually. Here's a fun uh, new twist on the zoo. I, I'm anti-zoo, but, well, actually, nah, even if you did this way, I'm still anti-zoo. <laughs> it's better than the alternative, I guess. Reverse zoo locks visitors in cages so lions can watch them. Cage humans by playing lions. with lions. Isn't this just what we've always done with sharks? Isn't this a good way to lose a limb? Yeah. So stick your hand through the cage and then pull the, back uh, the stump. So it's uh, plexiglass, and it gets tested every day for structural load more than an adult lion, and the holes are smaller than lion paws. Not human <laughs> fingers. Mm. 
Is there a picture of that in the article? Is this that looks like a stock photo. Uh, oh. No. No photo. Thehill.com. They went through the trouble of describing it, but not taking a picture of it. This is just weird food stories. I love them. And this one, I am very curious. I have to say, what would this taste we like? we got to do this on a soda review, right? Mountain Dew Flamin' Hot Six Pack, $12, coming soon. The first ever beverage combining sweet citrus flavor of Dew with the spicy kicked up flavor of Flamin' Hot. It'll be available by the time they watch this. It's coming available August 31st. Not, make, not sponsored by Dew. Uh, please make a note of that. Sausage Toes, <laughs> August 31st <laughs> is when this is for sale. Oh, you said not sponsored by Dew? This is official. I meant our... Uh, our our uh, program oh, yeah, is not. That's true. I don't think that we would have good things to say about it. <laughs> that would probably be a bad look for them because their, their logo used to be a hillbilly and then using hillbillies to promote it, it's a bad look. There was, there was some... Merch more. More merch, more merch, more merch. Uh, there was some country dish that I had one time when I was a teenager and it was so bad that I immediately just like projectile vomited. Like, I had a little bit of it, and it was like, something is wrong, and it was like, oh, no, I have to go to the bathroom. Wait. And it, it, was, it, was, it, was like a, it was like a violent reaction to something. Is this a product, or? No, I was, some, I was uh, you know, having dinner with somebody, and, like, their grandparents cooked something, and it was just, it was so bad that I just, I, I projectile vomited. It was bad. Was it the flavor that did it to you? Yeah, it was just a very, like, I don't know, it was like sweat sock. It was like oh. eating sweat sock. It was very bad. How many people in the United States, now let's say the world, are proudly rolling around with a major melon $10 Mountain Dew keychain? Who wants that? Who likes Mountain Dew this much? I I hope it's very extreme. (laughs) Store it on level one text. I like Mountain Dew. I don't drink it because I know that it's poison. I like the flavor, though. I don't like the flavor of Mountain Dew. But I don't want merch. China, uh, the, I think the, the Jack Ma thing really kicked this off because they decided that, hey, some of these guys are so rich that they might be more powerful than us, and we cannot have that. But I think maybe they went a little too far with their propaganda. <laughs> I think the, peop- the torches and pitchforks are out a little too much. China's common prosperity, quote-unquote, push does not mean killing the rich, an official says. So the people in China were like, yeah, these billionaires, we need to take this down, you know, common good, and we're all poor. And I was like, no, 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 we, we do need common prosperity, but that doesn't mean that some of us aren't more wealthy than others. Go back to your... Some of us are more equal than others. <laughs> it's also a very dangerous precedent, and one of the reasons that American politicians never play this card, they're all so rich. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jinping is doing quite well, isn't he? He is. Yeah, Weird. This is the one that you were talking about earlier, and it is uh, similar to the, the Space Force, like, oh, we're going to do it. But they were sitting around, and they were like, you know, what's it going to be like in 30 years? <laughs> let's, just, let's just guess. And that is exactly what they did. A bunch of guessing. The U.S. Air Force predicts force fields and death rays by 2060. Directed energy weapons conjure up images of the Death Star Super Laser or Optimus Prime's Ion Blaster. Yeah. Um, once you've got energy weapons, and you're good at energy weapons... An air force is not a thing anymore. You would need, you'd you'd only have like, you know. You need a space force. Well, you'd have like Putin's super missiles that are so fast that no human being could pilot them because they couldn't survive the G-forces. Even that against the laser is not going to work. As long as your tracking station can follow it. Yeah, as long as your tracking station can follow it. you could you could lead it. Your only option, well, eventually it's going to be so fast that it's like a bullet. So it's like from the time that it's launched to the time that it lands, you might not have enough time to like get a lock on it have you ever seen those uh navy systems where they have a a vulcan chain gun and incoming projectiles it just and they're gone (laughs) it can track that that's amazing yeah so we would definitely be able to do some cool stuff with this and by cool i mean destroying humanity yeah i was gonna say meanwhile (laughs) it's like can't we can't we work on getting cleaner energy and like water to everybody who needs it and it's like no 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 only if we boil the water by shooting it with lasers that we develop for the military. <laughs> that might be how we solve global warming. It's just increase the cloud cover of the planet and then just let the white reflective clouds you know, put more solar radiation back into space. Wouldn't that make it worse if you're reflecting heat from the surface back up onto clouds? That's why Venus is such a hot box. I don't know. Maybe if we could do it without some solar, it would even out. Might as well try it, right? <laughs> I mean, 
Dubai is already doing so much nasty stuff to the clouds. <laughs> Why not? Now this one, I realize that there is some amount of like angry old man here that I'm that I don't like this. But isn't isn't the gravitas of this whole thing a little more than Fortnite? Yeah. Doesn't this feel a little it commercial? Feels, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Fortnite lets you relive Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Uh, the rest of the headline that Level 1 would add is, In bold experiment to see if Fortnite can live on as a massively multiplayer online world. Sort of like Second Life. It's like, hey, the Fortnite engine, we could all just live in that and then experience some things, which is basically what this is. One example that I can immediately show here is that, you know, we're talking about something that had a, a huge impact on our society, and especially considering how race relations are right now it's a very incendiary topic and we have someone with a pink bear head <laughs> observing it is that good because it's inclusive or bad because it you know doesn't have the gravitas that is uh <laughs> i don't know will, will there be a point in like the the furthest dystopian future where like speeches like that become public domain but then someone like disney or fortnite buys it and then they're like it's an exclusive thing you can only watch it in our vr experience you know it's funny you mention that because they someone does own it there's a some sort of holding company that holds all of his intellectual property i guess and they had to work with them to do this it's also uh, the bear heads also foreshadowing for our very last story in terms know. of in terms of uh, inclusivity I, <laughs> I feel like that's just the mountain seclusion yeah like they're just now finding out about this and all oh, their outrage <laughs> but we're, we're foreshadowing that uh afghanistan a little bit of a problem there <laughs> so it's not really a, a big tech lead in we haven't been talking I'm about not, it i'm not laughing about afghanistan i'm laughing about the horror of the story yeah and so uh now this is not the u.s response although the u.s response probably couldn't have been worse yeah but it turns out other countries are also fumbling this football amazingly the home office has responded to complaints about the emergency Afghanistan helpline. It went to a uh, washing machine repair company. Whoops. So they put out this press release and it was like, hey, uh, are you a national that needs help getting out of Afghanistan? Just call this number. Well, no, it didn't work. Yeah. Mm. I, I read this and I thought that this is really funny because wasn't it Archer where their headquarters was in a laundromat? And it's like, oh, we've accidentally blown the cover of you know, the laundry mat where we could have, uh, you know, folks for hire extract people from overseas. I think that ship has sailed in that situation. I saw a headline. I didn't. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw a headline that the Biden administration chose to share a list of VIP Afghans they would like to get out of the country because they helped the Americans. Also known as a kill list. Yeah. I, Why would you do that? <laughs> Also, if anyone knows where these people are, please help us get them out. And yeah. it's like, what? Here's their last known address. Oh my gosh. Here's a picture of what they look like. Oh my gosh. Another terrible idea photo shoots with wild, large cats. So, okay. The headline is Leopard Attacks Model in a German Photo Shoot. But scroll down. This German photo shoot s set me up for this. Not that one. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So. I, I, I jumped to the bottom. This is a different story. No, that's not him. But I saw the headline. It was German, and I saw that, and I immediately thought, oh, no, that's where they retired the one that mauled Siegfried and Roy, and that it's happened to get killed again. But it, she didn't die, though. But she's mauled. She's mauled real bad. That it, was, it wasn't that. That, that was one's probably tiger. dead, though. How long did tigers live? Uh, also, that was a tiger. This like is a leopard. 25, 30 years. Yeah, no, I, I got all the details wrong, but... I just was like, oh, no, it's killed again. They didn't blame the tiger there. And I think that's that's correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tigers are, are, are super dangerous in, in real life. If you took me from from where I am now and you took me a planet to a planet run by tigers and you put me in a room full of hundreds and hundreds of tigers and started, you know, like making me try to do things, I might get violent. <laughs> Maybe, especially if I'm a lot bigger than those tigers. I don't really feel like doing this today. I've got an impacted bowel. It's like, oh, what's he trying to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> He's telling us he wants the whip. <laughs> they didn't whip the... Siegfried and Roy were angels. They didn't whip their animals. I guarantee they did. They're having a bad day one day. Give them a smack. 
3D printed meat. Uh, have you tried it? I've not tried 3D printed meat, no. We tried the Impossible Burger. It was yeah, that's not 3D printed. No, no. That's, that's grown. That's plant-based. And this is actually meat. Impossible Burger is not meat, right? Right. Uh, so this 3D printed meat, I remember reading, you know, the, like they made it, and everybody was like, wow, it's really impressive. And then they, at the very bottom of the article, and like a little paragraph hidden away, I was like, it tastes like crap. <laughs> we hate it. And this, I think, is they're trying to fix that. Scientists reveal the world's first 3D printed marbled Wagyu beef. So the 3D printer can print three different kinds of tissue, which is what's required, pretty much. You get vein tissue and muscle mm. tissue and fat. And so it's perfectly marbled. Look how delicious. As a result of that. Also a little bit of food coloring because, well, you know. So they print these long tubes and then cut them and then sort of like arrange them in a, a random grain. Meat structure. Yeah. And they've got some fat in there. They did not tell us how much this cost. I imagine it was tens of thousands of dollars. The cells were also grown. So this was not processed meat. Uh, th these were grown from uh, fat stem cells as well as uh, muscle and tissue stem cells. So these two types of stem cells to generate three kinds of tissue. And um, yeah, I would try one. It probably won't give me cancer. I may, maybe I, I might try one. I wouldn't be the first. I'd mm. like to see plenty of evidence of other people <laughs> trying them before I try them. It turns out it's been in the uh, the hamburger, you know, uh, the hamburger that you get from chain stores for the last 10 years. And then they're like, surprise, we've been growing that in a lab. <laughs> Did you see the, the revelation that came out about McDonald's burgers? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? I didn't see that. They're, you know how the chicken nuggets are that? mechanically separated pink slime yeah it turns out was it 40 percent 40 percent 40 percent of mcdonald's burgers are mechanically separated beef pink slime mm. which until you bathe it in a chemical don't look that up is not human consumption meat yeah you, you cannot sell it to humans but then they treat it with the chemical and then they're like yeah okay I had McDonald's, I think it was last week after the if, news. I was like mm, craving McDonald's. If, if you look that up, you will never have it again. Yeah. It doesn't stop me. <laughs> I eat nuggets to this day. I don't care. Yeah, so I, I read The Jungle by Upton Sinclair when I was in high school. And like that caused several people in my class to go vegetarian briefly. <laughs> and all I was like, man, I kind of just want a Slim Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like experiencing The Jungle in about 30 seconds of video. Like just that level of horror. In a, in a really compressed timeline. So it might be a little bit more horrifying. I found the jungle was depressing to me on a different level. <laughs> not about the not about the meat production, but about like the horrible things that happened to the people in that. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, to me, it always goes back to the same place. Why do these people keep breeding? <laughs> Their lives were misery. They hated it all. It was awful. But they were like, yeah, just keep having kids. They'll enjoy it, even though we don't. Now, Chris, you say we did this one before. I don't remember anything about it. We're going to quickly revisit it. Uh, which animals could you beat in a fight? Now, personally, both of you, where is your stopping point? Oh, I definitely could take a goose. House cat's easy. You think you could take a goose? I feel like goose should be higher oh, on yeah. the list of threat. I, I would I've, smash I've, a goose. I've, uh, I've picked a goose up by the neck before that was like, you know, giving me a hard time. And it was like the fight or flight thing. And it was like, I'll leave you alone, goose. And it kept coming. And it was like, all yeah, right. Geese are freaking <laughs> aggressive. That's, that's my thing. Like, they're not... They're not that like strong or anything, but they're they're just mean as hell. And the most it's going to do is bruise me or maybe take a little bit of skin. So I feel like I give it my left forearm, right? Mm -hmm. And then I get the neck. And then the stuff that's over. Yeah, that's if you over. get the neck. Yeah. I might be able to take a goose. I think you got a goose all day long. Medium-sized dog? Mm. That's iffy. iffy yeah. They're going to take damage teeth. there. Yeah. yeah. The that's thing, funny. what worries me about the dog is my pain reaction, mm -hmm. right? Am yeah. I going to be able to, like, once it latches on... That's my opportunity, but is my pain reaction going to make me do what? My, leave my fight, fly, fight plan behind? Well, it's like with Rue when she was little, you know, she didn't bite hard or anything, but she nibbled on stuff. And like sometimes when we were playing, she could nibble pretty hard. And that was when she was tiny. Yeah. A medium sized dog, like if they're trying oh, to get you, they'll get you good. They got crazy jaw strength. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You're going to have to, you're going to take a bite in that encounter. Yeah, for sure. Now, Eagle, no, no way do way. I tangle with an Eagle. Mm -mm. No, no. No. Yeah, I think yeah, chimpanzee, I've heard that story about the woman who got her face ripped off, and I'm like, no. Chimps are way stronger per pound for pound. A chimp will destroy you. 
I uh, I have a very vivid memory from childhood of a hawk carrying a cat off. Mm-hmm. It was like one of those, mm. you know, like fresh snow mornings and you go out on the porch and it was quiet. And uh, the cat had been sleeping on the porch and then it was like, it gets down and it goes. And then just out of nowhere, it's just like the cat was gone. And I was like, I saw a blur and it was like, oh my God, a cat carried, uh, a hawk carried away the cat. <laughs> There's this great video. Probably one of the Twitch lurkers posted it. And it's a it's that same situation. It's a, a rabbit, and you see the hawk like just hit the ground, and it's got the rabbit. And this little deer runs yeah. up, and the deer like runs by, and it stops, and it looks back, and it comes over, and it's just like just smashes that hawk, <laughs> and the rabbit runs away, but the deer doesn't relent. It's just like it, smash, it smash, the smash, hawk. smash. Yeah. It's a great video. I'm sure you can uh, search for "deer kills hawk" on YouTube. Also, I find it interesting that Americans in this chart are way more confident than Brits about what they can take on. Well, we're better. Just, you know, overall. We do, you know, maybe it's, we have more exposure to wild animals maybe than Brits. <laughs> now, I would say, once you get into the bottom half of this graph, aside from kangaroo, my first pick is going to be crocodile, right? Because <laughs> I'm going to try the Steve Irwin thing. You get on its back and hold on hard enough. <laughs> It'll death roll. And I'm too small. I can't, I well, can't pin down a crocodile. But a gorilla, lion, maybe, uh, elephant, no, no, nah. mm-hmm. no. I still think crocodile is the easiest pick down there, even better than wolf. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. a wolf. They have medium-sized dog, large dog, and wolf, and it's like those are all kind of the same. Engagement challenge: If oh. you were going to face a wolf or below, and you could you could pick, which one would you pick? Chris, I played you, you King take, Cobra. Take the roughest, meanest. What do you got? Rottweiler, Doberman, German Shepherd. Nothing compared to a wolf. Yeah, but I'm saying like. They're all kind of similar. They could have picked better animals for this survey. Well, well, what animal would you pick? Something that's not a dog shape. They don't have tigers on here. Well, the quadruped shape is pretty yeah. universal. What about like a whale? They got a lion on there. A whale? <laughs> a shark. <laughs> is that in or out of the water? Yes, yeah, so they don't have any, any aquatic animals on this list. I don't think anybody could defeat a whale. Like, no, even if the so. whale wasn't fighting back. They're just too big. What are you going to do? Yeah. Have you guys ever heard of the milk crate challenge? No. Nope. Yes. I just heard about this very recently. And when I heard about it, I started Googling videos of it. And I almost immediately came upon this one. Viral video catches fatal Louisiana shooting during milk crate challenge. Oh. So do you understand the concept here? You build a pyramid of milk crates, but it's only one wide. Right? So when you start walking up it, it's going to wobble. And you have to try to get all the way to the top and then all the way over to the other side. No one's done it that I've seen so far. So they waited till this guy got near the top and they started shooting. Three dead. Oh. Yeah. Crazy. There's also an insane amount of videos where you can just watch people smash their head. Because this is crazy dangerous. I think someone died just from a fall as well. Mm. I was debating the other day when I saw this starting to trend. I was like, is this better or worse than the cinnamon challenge? Way Which, worse. Yeah, Much I think worse. it's way worse. Definitely in, worse. In terms of human death, yeah, way worse. The kill count on the milk crate challenge is much higher than the cinnamon. And our, our final story is somewhat local. Oh. <laughs> and again, we live in the mountains, right? And mountains are incredible even in the age of digital information the mountains are incredible at lagging culture yes and technology yeah and so when we were in school when we were in high school we were wearing a brand of jeans and if you went to the nearest city people would be like why are you wearing that (laughs) did you get those from a second hand store that's not hot anymore i had that experience moving from washington to here where Mm -hmm. like west coast everyone loved in sync and then i moved here and everyone was still on backstreet boys and i was like backstreet boys is old news like that's the mountains (laughs) the mountains will insulate you from culture and it turns out that we are just now getting up to this point kentucky school district students are dressing and acting like cats let me go ahead and give you the modern translation filter for this. Furries have come to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Meade County. And clearly, a lot of people from Meade County did not know what a furry was. No. And I gotta say, though, I feel like I'm on the furry side here. Yeah. Because what, what, are they, what problems are they causing? There was one grandmother that they quoted several times in this article, and she's like, It ain't right! <laughs> 
Well, they were, at least at my school, also in Eastern Kentucky, they were weird about, like, Halloween. You weren't allowed to dress up at Halloween. Like, because they're like, it's distracting. So I imagine maybe that's their argument here. But, I mean, who's it hurting? Like, I, what's the problem? Uh, I guess it is distracting, but couldn't you argue that, like, just don't pay attention to it? Just have some self-control, maybe? Yeah, yeah. This is still a problem. We have excellent schools here. I'm just embarrassed by what this has gotten to. Well, first of all, the grammar there. But uh, I, there's, there's going to be a special school board meeting on September 14th to look for a follow-up from Level 1 News. Well, the, the principal said they were already in violation of the dress code. So I think they've, they've begun to crack down on it already. <laughs> also, do you think they were all cats? Do you think no. anybody did anything other than the cat? They probably just assumed they were cats because they couldn't recognize what animal it was, yeah. but it yeah. was just like, you know, the... Yeah. I bet they, <gasps> they were definitely all animals with tails, though, right? Because that's everybody's favorite part of the furry outfits, the tail. Oh, yeah. That's... But I'm wondering, like, I wish they had pictures in this article because, like, there's not... It's kids. You can't afford a really nice quality fursuit at that age, I wouldn't think, especially not around here. Like, where would you get it made? I don't know because... So are they homemade? Another thing about the, the seclusion of the mountains is you still have high skill, like, tailoring and stuff in some of the families. Yeah, so, like, did someone's grandma make this? What if this ends up leading one of these country grandmas? Like, they discover she's amazing at furry suits, and now she's an Etsy legend. <laughs> this that is the cottage happen. industry that saves eastern Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> we go from coal as our export to fursuits. Now that would Beautiful. be the future that I love. If only fursuits incorporated crochet somehow, I think we would have a shot at that. All right. I don't understand what the, the link to crochet is. All the old people around here are incredible crocheters. Yeah. Maybe you've just invented a new kind of fursuit. Mm. It would definitely breathe well. Yeah, because it's, it's like a mesh. That was the nice thing about, you know, having the... Uh, the the crochet pullover is like even in the warmer months it's still pretty breathable but in winter if you're really cold it's it's good at holding the heat in mm. what if i'm uh tied up on a hotel room floor at a convention oh man how I does mean, it perform that you, you could basically you know you could lay a cro you know just double it over and uh, you could sleep on the floor on one of those it's great i'm never taking it off yeah that's not allowed all right, all right. that's it Bye.